Um, good morning, everybody from uh, Chantilly in France, where I've uh, participated in, uh, in a program run by YPO, the Young Presidents Organization, a group that brings together uh, business uh, folks and business leaders from around the world, uh, where we were uh, discussing yesterday uh, the geopolitical and geoeconomic uh, landscape that we inhabit. Uh, I mentioned that this uh, landscape will be uh, very fractured moving forward and fractured in two uh, senses. So one on the political or diplomatic uh, side of things. We seem to be moving to an environment of blocks uh, with a US and a China uh, block and a very hard divide across these blocks um, where there will be conflict and collision on the diplomatic front, on the trade front, on the tech front, and a number of areas. Um, a whole part, a big, big part of the world, mainly the Global South countries, resisting alignment, uh, trying to avoid being dragged into the conflict of these two countries in various ways, uh, but still uh, these blocks. Now, dip diplomatically, politically, this has big implications. It will make life harder for multilateral institutions to function properly because when you have these two huge actors coming to the table with a zero-sum mentality, it'll be hard to push forward on the climate agenda, on the trade agenda, on the peacekeeping and mediation agenda. Uh, so, you know, there's this question now of are we going to be able to continue to provide global public goods, you know, like the safety of sea lanes, uh, peacekeeping operations, funding of multilateral activities, and, and many others, you know. Um, I, for one, think that we're going to miss uh, U.S. Uh, hegemony, some of the benefits of that, because the U.S. was very willing to provide these things, and it's becoming less so. So we're going to see a failure of provision of these goods, and this is going to be felt very particularly on the edges of the system. So there'll be more noise, there'll be more conflict. Particularly, I think we will miss the deterrence capacity of the perception that the U.S. can be anywhere uh, and be effective uh, at, as, a, as an international actor. Now, on the economic front, fracturing means tensions on the trade space. It means more restrictions to trade, both tariff and non-tariff barriers, which we're already seeing. So, <clears throat> for example, the IMF keeps track of restrictive measures to trade being imposed by countries on one another. And about a decade ago, there were 200 of these measures imposed annually. Most of them ended up in the WTO um, conflict resolution mechanism. Last year, it was 3,000 with a WTO that is um, now much less functional because, in fact, of the actions of the U.S. and others in trying to uh, impede the WTO from functioning fully. So, you know, this is a much, much more challenging environment for folks uh, here in the room. Uh, they're all trying to hedge this risk through a shortening of their supply chains, where they direct investment, where they place employment. This is inflationary. It's inefficient for them. So all in all, from this very peaceful place in Chantilly, uh, the diagnosis is our companies are facing a much tougher environment to operate in. They're going to need to do a lot more foresight, a lot more geopolitical and political risk analysis, and hedge a lot more uh, risk than in the past 20, uh, 30 years. And the ones that do this well will succeed and do very well. The others um, are going to face these accidents uh, time and time again. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye.